I'm back. I'm back. So as I'm shooting this video, we are all right in the midst of the coronavirus. COVID-19! We are right in the middle of that. So I know everybody viewing this, things are a little bit different for probably just about everybody watching this right now. Things have been a little bit different for me as well. So as you see in my back in the background here, this uh, the studio is not in my house. This is actually my recording studio, Speak Life Studio here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Shameless plug, check it out. But just a couple weeks, we actually had to shut down our studio to the public. One of the things that I don't want to have is music being taken away from you during this time to where we're going to be quarantined for the next at least for probably about the next couple weeks so the goal of this video is to really help the people who's out there who may be quarantined in their house that can't get to the recording studio that may just have a mic sitting around and you got the laptop but you've just kind of been a little intimidated to dive into pro tools just because of all the options that's exactly how i was i remember i had pro tools maybe a, a couple months before i even wanted to record anybody in it just because there's so many different options just a little bit intimidating so the goal is to uncomplicate all that give you all the tools all the tricks i'm going to even go way back to the basics on how you get your interface plugged in i'm going to take the camera off the tripod get this lighting that, that's making me look pretty at least i think and literally give you a step-by-step -step walkthrough tutorial on how to plug in your interface, how to properly set your inputs, your outputs, your I.O. and Pro Tools, how to make sure that your playback engine's right, how to make sure that whenever you're recording yourself, you don't hear a lag whenever you're recording yourself. It's real time. As soon as you get done watching this video, pull up the laptop. You can plug in your interface, plug in the mic, and start making the heat. Let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, guys, so this is our setup for today. Uh, right now, for this uh, example, we're going to be using the Mic Tech. Shout out to the chief recording engineer up here at Speak Life Studio, Jesse G, for bringing the bad boy up here. Uh, that's we're going to be using his mic for this example today. Just the XLR microphone. We are going into the vintage Focusrite Sapphire 6. They don't even sell these things anymore. Literally, my very first interface ever. Uh, I thought I was going to be a rapper at one point. <laughs> This was my interface that I recorded all my rap songs on. Not doing that anymore. We'll leave that story for another day. But as you see here, we are going from the mic is going into input one. We also have, um, you know, with our input one, we have our gain turned up to about four. If you keep that down at zero, you're not going to get any, you're not going to get any signal from your microphone. Another thing to mention here too is the 48V is, is, is your phantom power. If you're using a condenser microphone, you're gonna make sure that the 48V is engaged. All interfaces are pretty similar, so your interface may look a little bit different, but it's gonna have probably just about the same exact features as this nice vintage interface has. Uh, obviously, we have our speaker cables in the back plugged into the back of the your interface. If we didn't have that, we wouldn't get any volume. From there, we're just going USB into our MacBook Pro. That's kind of our basic setup here. Let's go ahead and switch over to the Pro Tools screen. And we'll go ahead and start breaking this down. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and dive into it. With this being a Pro Tools tutorial, I am assuming you've already got Pro Tools downloaded, installed, all that good stuff. So this is gonna be the first menu that's gonna pop up whenever you open up Pro Tools. And as you can see here, I am gonna be running off of a Mix by JE recording template. Uh, one thing that I'll say about this recording template is this is a 100% free oh my God. Wow. template Pro Tools template with all stock Pro Tools plugins. So anybody, if you just downloaded Pro Tools, you're going to have every single one of the plugins that I've put in that template. If you don't know how to install a Pro Tools template, I will drop down a link to the video on how to get that Pro Tools template installed. I got a super simple, super quick video explaining how to do that. I believe I may even be able to uh, link it here in this video that may be popping up right now. So there's that link if you wanna check that out. And the reason why I'm gonna be using a template is because it just kind of simplifies things. We're not gonna have to break down how to add tracks, none of that stuff. It's actually gonna already be set up for you within this template. So that's the reason why we're gonna be using this template. Like I said, it's a 100% free download. You don't have to pay anything for it. Totally free, you should go check that out. So here, what we're gonna do is we are going to title our track. We're gonna title it, got that drip, because you know I got the drip. But what we're gonna do here is we've got that titled, 
down here in the file type, you're gonna make sure to uh, click wave. For the sample rate, I typically do use 48. You can get away with 44.1, but in this example, we're gonna go 48. The bit depth, you're gonna want to do 24 bit. Uh, 32 bits, just kind of overkill, 24 bits, good. And then your IO settings, let's just do stereo mix for this example. All right, so from there, uh, another thing that you may wanna check out too, is you wanna make sure that you're saving this in a location, you, you know you're gonna be able to find it. Here, I'm just saving it to my documents. So from there, we'll just go create. This is probably going to show up for you just because our input and output is probably going to be a little bit different. So you just want to click no. All right. So now we've got Pro Tools pulled up. Your Pro Tools screen is probably going to look a little bit different. I know sometimes some people, it may show up with the mix screen pulled up. Uh, all you're going to want to do there is just go to window and then you just want to make sure you're pulling up your edit window. So let's kind of go step by step on how I do certain things. Th all of this is probably gray. It may look a little bit different for you as well. So kind of what I want to do is just go over some real quick things that kind of makes me operate a little more efficient here in Pro Tools. First things first, I personally don't like seeing this clip thing. So I'm going to get this out of our way. So over here, you're probably going to see, you know, hook lead. That's all probably going to be the same. More than likely, all this is going to be gray for you, though. What I like to do, I like to color code everything. So if it is gray, what I like to do is I'll click over here where it's colored. You want to make sure that that is turned on. If you want the color, uh, like I said, it just kind of makes things a little bit more efficient for me. You can kind of turn up the saturation, brightness, all that stuff. That's just kind of how I like it there. Outside of that, this may also look a little bit different. Some of the things that I like to personally add, and this is how you add it. I think I've got everything that I really need. I don't, I probably don't need the mic input or mic preamps. Just kind of deselect that. I'm not gonna need the instrument. You do want to select the inserts A through E. That way you can kind of see your plugins that you're gonna be working with. I personally like to keep the inserts F through J. That gives me a little bit of extra space over here for more plugins if I need to. I like to do a send and you definitely wanna make sure your IO is selected as well. If you wanna you know, add comments on a certain track, you could, you could add that if you want to. Sometimes I'll, I'll pull that up. Outside of that, another key thing that may be a little bit different for you is yours may kind of look like that to make it as simple as possible let's go ahead and select the zoom controls and how i got up here was this arrow right here you just want to select the zoom controls you want to do transport uh, you want to do midi don't necessarily have to have that uh, don't necessarily have to have that we can keep that up there just for this example. So we're getting really close, guys. The other thing that I'll kind of mention here, you wanna make sure that that's selected, that enables your smart tool so that you can kind of quickly drag, drop things in the editing portion of Pro Tools. Another thing that I'll mention here, it may not be set to grid, it may be on shuffle for you guys or whatever the case may be. I personally like to use grid. If it's not lit up blue, you just, just click that again, make it grid. And then outside of that, one of the things that we wanna make sure that we do is change some of our some of our settings so first things first let's make sure that we have the right playback engine selected so as you see uh we've already got the sapphire selected yours may be something else let's make sure that we go ahead and uh select the the right playback engine which is going to be your interface so you want to click yes and let's pull that back up one more time too one of the things that i'll say about here you want to make sure that you have the correct buffer size so if you've ever recorded somewhere else or if you've ever tried to record yourself and whenever you speak into the microphone, whenever you hear yourself back, there's like a lag, like you speak and then you hear yourself a couple seconds later or a second later, that's a thing called latency. The way to fix that is you wanna make sure that you either have 256 selected or 128. 256 is uh, gonna be a little lighter on your CPU usage. 256 is generally okay for me. You know, some people, they can kinda tell that there's a little bit of latency, so they may need to boost it to 128. But for this example, 256 is good. If you have it all the way down here, you're gonna have extreme latency. If you have it all the way up to 32 samples, your CPU is gonna be tapping out and screaming at you. So these are kind of the two options that I like to stay in between. And let's make sure to click OK there. From there, we also want to go into our I.O. settings. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to click default to make sure that everything's set up appropriately for our interface. 
click default that may change some things for you then we'll go okay and let's go ahead and start making some changes to our input and output settings here within our tracks so what you're probably seeing is this is probably grayed out for you just like it is for me because our settings are going to be a little bit different so what we're going to do is i'm going to click this hook lead here and this is a quick pro tool shortcut you can leave me a tip for this if you want uh, or you can just drop a comment that that's that's that can be your tip you can just drop a comment that this is helping you any at all what we're going to do instead of having to go through and individually change the inputs for each individual track what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this hook lead is highlighted we're going to hold down shift and we're going to scroll down here all the way down to the verse two ad libs you know click that all the while holding the shift you don't want to let that go from there we can scroll back up to the top you can let go of your shift if you want to and we can go shift and option and you want to click here on your input and as you've seen a little earlier in the video our mic is going to be on input one so we're going to click input one so as you see all of our input is set up properly for each and every one so whenever we arm this track to record check 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 we're live baby our microphone's coming through we've got that set up another thing that i'll mention here too so the top one's going to be your input and the bottom one's going to be your output it's where each of these individual tracks are being outputted to so as you can see here on this vocal bus where we have our plugins the reason why i've set up this uh, this template the way that i have is because if you have these plugins if you have eq compressor ds or reverb and delay on each individual audio file down here it's going to take up a lot of cpu power so what i've done is i've got each and every one of these uh, individual audio tracks routed to this one vocal bus what this is doing is anything that is routed to this vocal bus is going to be affected by the plugins that i select here even though it may not look like it uh, even though there's no you know eqs on each individual file here it's routed to this vocal bus and there is you know a basic eq compressor deesser and reverb on each and every one of these tracks so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense from this point what we're going to do is you see we have our beat audio track here what we can do here is we can just pull in pull in this beat just gonna throw this on the beat track another way to import your audio file if you don't want to do it that way is you can go up here and go import audio and select your uh, audio files that you want to import you just go convert done and it'll throw it in there i'm giving you all the sauce here's a here's another quick shortcut if you go shift command i that is the shortcut to import your beat so outside of that guys i think we're good to go to go ahead and start recording vocals and I just want to give you a quick overview, some quick things that you may want to know to start recording your vocals. So what you do, how you arm your vocal track to start recording is you are just going to go, you know, say on this beat, we're starting with your hook. So you're going to go, you're arming that. So we are live and how you get to the point to where you start recording your vocals. Uh, you just want to come up here to uh, record enable, and then you click play and just like that we are recording in pro tools and whenever you get your hook recorded if you want to throw a, a hook stack on there you can go down here and add extra things to your to your vocals you know if you want to add some ad libs you do that there whenever you're ready to start recording your verse you just arm your verse and do the exact same thing even though all these vocals are routed to the vocal bus you can still make different edits like if you want to add like a telephone effect to your hook ad libs you know just go over here to your eq um we add that then we'll go to the special effects throw the phone thing on there now whenever you record this hey 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 that's how you throw different effects on each individual audio track so that really wraps it up guys being totally clueless on how to get your vocals recorded in the pro tools too in really about 15 minutes you're now recording your vocals and the industry standard audio recording software feel free to drop any comments leave any questions any concerns anything you want to add in the comments and i will be sure to get back with you and help you out as much as i can so that wraps it up for today guys until next time i'm out of here peace